What's the word, y'all? 11 game slate in the association, which is nothing. I just went onto Twitter and somebody told me that on Monday, all 30 teams are playing 15 games. So I had trouble keeping up with the 11. I cannot imagine the type of work we're gonna have to put in Monday. Um, but the thing that's on my mind as of right now in this second is Matt Ryan. The Lakers game just ended. Matt Ryan off the bench comes in the fourth quarter, hits two big shots, including the one to go to OT. And then Coach Darvaham said, thank you for your service. Get your butt on that bench and let the real players play. And the Lakers get their second win of the season. We'll talk about that a little bit later. I really want to talk about the Cleveland Cavaliers. Because boy, oh boy, do they look amazing. Right now, they are 6-1 on the season, and their only loss was the first game of the year where they went against the Toronto Raptors in a game where Darius Garland got hit all up in his face, and he missed three quarters of it. So the team has been really, really good. They beat the Bulls by a million points. They beat the Wizards, the Magic, the Celtics in overtime, the Knicks, and then the Celtics in overtime again. I saw people on the timeline going as far as saying, hey, this is a, pre a preview of the Eastern Conference Finals for this season. And I, I can't go that far. Because in my mind, um, at least through the first two weeks in basketball, the, the Kenny power rankings in my brain without thinking about it says Milwaukee Bucks. So I'm going to like that. Were, they're my pick to win the championship. So Milwaukee Bucks, Suns, Cavs or Cavs, Suns, one or the other. So uh, I don't know if the season is going to be in the conference finals. But hey, they did it last year. They could definitely do it again. I know they tired of seeing that boy Donovan Mitchell because boy, oh boy, two games, two overtimes and a really the game of the night if you ask me there were some question marks for me um when this trade went down i was extremely excited if you go back and watch the video of the trade where we reacted to the donovan mitchell trade i was extremely excited i told the world that it was not an overpay because donovan mitchell is that nice and people low-key kind of forgot the one major concern i had was like how good of a defensive team can you be down the stretch if darius garland and donovan mitchell are your two guards and again the sample size is really small because this was their first real game together and the clutch the defense looked really good and the offense looked even better so i did some digging oh i did some digging you know i'm excited about something if i did some research so last season the cleveland cavaliers played in 46 clutch games at his second most in basketball last season under the la lakers and i think what they determined to be clutch is like the game was within five points with x amount of minutes ago and in those games the Cleveland Cavaliers were 22 and 24, a sub 500 team when it got down to the nitty gritty. And it makes sense if you watch the team last season, because we got to the fourth quarter, we get to the clutch situations. Let's be honest, the NBA is very simple once we get to the clutch situations, like give the ball to our best player and let him do something. And in that case, it was Darius Garland, Darius Garland, Darius Garland. And Darius Garland is such an unselfish dude, like he can take over these games. But like once we get to the fourth quarter, they were just giving him the ball, like please do something, please do something. And what we saw in today's game it's like donovan mitchell will take over and then now is darius garland too like they have multiple options down the stretch that's not just darius garland go make a play and this game it was donovan mitchell um step back jump shot layup dunk there was three straight possessions in this game when donovan mitchell scored late in the fourth quarter he missed a shot and darius garland called for the ball and then he hit a shot we saw the tandem working in real time and it was amazing and I also think it's going to be amazing for Donovan Mitchell because I don't know if y'all remember some of the clutch stats from last year in Utah. This article was written last year. This year, Mitchell has atrocious shooting splits of 37.5 field goal percentage, a 22% three-point percentage, and a 53% free throw percentage in clutch time, which is wild, Donovan, that you went this far into a season and you were shooting 53% from the free throw line. That was like the yips or something. And you know, he got that free throw We he closed his eyes and he breathes deep. Shooting 53% in clutch time free throws is ridiculous. Uh, and la they were saying that last year he was better, in fact, and they were saying the year before that wasn't much better. And he's never had a season in which he shot over 42% from the field and 33% from three in the clutch. And so far this season, it is a small sample size, but not really because they've played six clutch games this season already. Um, and that's like tied with the Utah Jazz, it's tied with the Miami Heat or whatever. And in this one, so far, he's shooting 44% from the field and only 30% from three in the clutch time. But again, comparing it to his field goal percentage beforehand and his three-point percentage beforehand, slight upgrade. Um, and what we saw in this one is that you had him going off, but also Darius Garland doing his thing as well. So far, um, the teams that made the big time trades, I always just say it will take a minute to jail to take a minute to jail. I said the same thing about the Atlanta Hawks. They had a big win today. We'll talk about that in a minute. And you're seeing it with the with the Minnesota Timberwolves as well. Once you add an all star caliber player to your lineup, it will take time. But for the Cleveland Cavaliers, it hasn't really yet. 
I, I still believe there will be a jail in here because we have to remember that Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell played 12 minutes together basically in the first game. And then this was their real first experience on the court together for a full full cycle. So I wouldn't be surprised if maybe they lost a few games in the near future as they try to figure everything out. But for it being their very first game, basically playing together, it looked really, really good. The unsung heroes on this one, of course, had to be like Dean Wade or specifically today, Evan Mobley got a huge, huge rebound and overtime offensive rebound over time that led to a Darius Garland three point shot. And Evan Mobley in general has just been so amazing. Like if you just watch him individually. On, when they're on the defensive side of the ball all the things that he has been able to do with him being the his size and still pretty slim when it comes to nba power forwards and nba bigs he has been amazing so even with the small guards up top they've been locked in and the defense still looks elite before this game they were one of the they were the last team that was top five in offense the top five in defense but again small sample size considering we're seven games to the season i think their offense dropped from like number four to like number 11 after today Regardless, if they stick around there and their defense is still top five, this team is a legitimate team. And I thought it was going to take maybe a year before I considered them a contender. But based on what I've seen so far, it's hard not to put them in that camp. Maybe I won't because some of the competition they've played so far isn't amazing. Like the two Celtics wins are big, but I need to see maybe another game against one of the top end teams before we say it officially. But boy, oh boy, do they look damn good. All right, let's get to some of the other games on the day, like the Lakers beating the Pelicans, and they are now two on two of five on the season. Win streak in LA, ladies and gentlemen. They are here. This is the second game in a row, I guess technically third game in a row, where it feels like Russell Westbrook is, I don't want to say him because the version of him that we know is averaging like 30, 10, and 10, but he, he, he has really bought into the role off the bench. And it's kind of weird that it took this long considering that they played a game in the preseason with Russ coming off the bench, and it was all right. And they were like, ah, we're going to get to the regular season, and we're going to start him anyway. And then it took him X amount of games. But the game's off the bench. He's looked good. He shot 60% from the field today. He hit a three, nine assists, seven rebounds, all of this off the bench. And uh, overall, the team won another basketball game. Not the most beautiful game for Anthony Davis. He missed a lot of bunnies down the stretch. But a win is a win. To see uh, Chicago Bulls legend Troy Brown Jr. cutting back door every possession is dope. The Pelicans definitely could have used somebody down a stretch that would be their primary shot taker and maker, and that would be Brandon Ingram. So, Pelicans fans, everything will be okay. Um, this is definitely not a game you want to lose, but they looked young today. Um, Dyson Daniels played really, really solid, but at the end of the day, he missed those two free throws to open up the door for Matt Ryan. Regardless, eventually, Brandon Ingram will be back, and so will y'all. And, oh, to have a game where Troy Murphy shot 0 for 5 from 3, that don't happen often. I'll just say that don't happen often. Tyler Hero in the fourth quarter. Actually, I don't remember how many total points it was. In the fourth quarter, Tyler Hero gave them 13 points, including the game winner. And you know what was the best thing about this if you're in... Miami Heat fan. It's Kyle Lowry's. Kyle Lowry's performance today, man. 22 points, seven assists. This was the best he's looked on the court all season long. And I'm not even just talking about the production because 22 points can be, I don't know, 12 points. He was moving way better today than he has moved all season. And that is a very, very good sign. Um, the Kings are, of course, missing De'Aaron Fox in this one. I saw somebody say, hey, if De'Aaron Fox is playing, this is the Kings win. And then somebody else said, if Jimmy Butler was playing, the, the Heat went by 20. So, uh, Jimmy Butler told the world, hey, we going to win the championship still. And then since that day, they have not lost. So, I'm j I am i don't know. Jimmy Butler gave in that pet talk, and it is what it is. When I watch this Kings team, and there are so many different versions of this team. It's the, it's the De'Aaron Fox version, right? It's the Sabonis version. And then it's the Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox version. And I'm sure every team has their own version. But it feels so disconjointed. And they're still trying to figure out which version of the team is their best lineup or which version of their team is going to have the most success. But in this one, I mean, you could tell that they were desperately, desperately missing a lead ball handler and a uh, playmaker. And they're losing down the stretch. So it is what it is, Kings fans. The streak ends at two. But you'll probably be back on it once De'Aaron Fox comes back. I need De'Aaron Fox to come back for the sake of my fantasy team because I am losing. Losing. De'Aaron Fox and Jimmy Butler on my fantasy team, and they both set out these games. Crazy. The Bulls win a back-to-back. -back. And you know what the best thing about this is? Zach Levine played. Us Bulls fans have been a little bit scared. We talk about knee management for his knee injury management. Oh no, he was questionable, questionable, questionable. He hadn't played a back-to-back -back all season long. Played today. 
and we didn't we, i mean none of our starters actually played really well other than patrick williams but luckily for us we're going against a team that was missing their star player in Lamelo ball they're missing probably their second best player in terry rogier and their third best player got injured halfway through but a win is a win at the end of the day. The best thing about this entire game was Patrick Williams. I know I got to give a lot of love to Javante Green. He was the first Chicago Bull player to go 7-for-7 seven seven from the field since Cristiano Felicio. Stacey King said that on the broadcast. The first Bull since Felicio did it years ago to go 7-for-7 seven seven from the field. Crazy. But two games in a row, back-to-back -back nights, Patrick Williams looked aggressive. And Billy Donovan talked about it yesterday, saying that Patrick Williams has to realize that his role isn't just play defense and pass the ball to the to the good players. It's like, go get yours. And he has been doing that over the last two games. And if we get this version of P. Will all season long or for an extended period of time, I, I think a lot of Bulls fans are super happy with it, you know, because of the first week and a half of the season, a lot of us were really iffy on some things but the bench unit so far this year for the bulls has been really good one of the best um benches in basketball but deeper than that i think a lot of bulls fans we're going to be excited about the fact that we're defending this season the offense hasn't come around our, actually our offense is one of the worst in basketball but the defense is slightly above league average i thought it would be the other way around you know so um, eventually shots will start falling and eventually opposing teams like tonight will stop hitting every shot because the Bulls give up a ton of made three-pointers and they, a lot of them aren't even open they just hit contested shots today they did not and the Bulls win comfortably next game Paul George did his thing again 28 points but this is what I want to talk about Alperin Sengun while this game was going on the Celtics and the Cavaliers game was also going on so I feel like the only people that are watching this game is probably Clippers fans and Rockets fans I want you to go to NBA.com and then go to play-by-play -play and watch all the Sengun possessions i'm talking about get all 13 of his shot attempts even the one that he missed i need you to go out there and get his 13 rebounds just watch his performance today because he was amazing he was going at zubach and uh he looked like the better center today and zubach has been really good all season long so he got outplayed by the young guy the bucks win did not get a single second of play for me and then the spurs game got like the first quarter and i was like oh my god the spurs are gonna do it again there was no Keldon, there was no um a devil of a sale they sat a bunch of people today and through the first quarter hold on when the score was 32 to 31 i'm like are they gonna try to are they gonna figure out a way to win this game without like three starters nope because we get to that second quarter and it was 32 18 then it was 40 to 21 both in the favor of the the raptors by the way and in the fourth quarter it was 39 to 30. so yeah the the raptors put it all together after that first quarter and killed the game pascal siakam is just looking so amazing so far i've been seeing people saying mv pascal mvp pascal um, I don't know if we're going that far, but boy, oh boy, he said he wanted to be top five, and he's probably, at this point in the season, looking top 10. Uh, so that is an improvement. 22, 11, and 10 today, and only played 27 minutes because they were winning by 40. Um, OG Ananobi continues to pick pockets, second game in a row between the last one against the Atlanta Hawks, and then tonight, five steals tonight, and I think six steals the previous night. So he is really clamping up, which is great. The Jazz didn't have the magic today. Just all right, you know, it's all right. Because on the other hand, we saw Christian Wood have probably his best performance other than, I guess, open the night for him um, with 21 points. And then who else? Um, Dwight Powell. Dwight Powell gave him some really, really quality minutes. Basically being out of the rotation for the first week and a half of basketball. Then JaVale McGee wanted to rest. And then Dwight Powell has played pretty solid in the minutes that they've given him um, since the JaVale McGee rest. JaVale played eight minutes in this game. And then the rest was to Christian Wood slash uh, Dwight Powell slash... Uh, Maxi Kleber. One thing that was really interesting that came out in the news earlier today was that there was one Western Conference team that was thinking about giving up veteran shooters to get Ben Simmons. And I saw a lot of people on the timeline saying the only team that makes sense is the Mavericks because they do have Tim Hardaway Jr., who in this game shot one for nine. And they also have um, <laughs> Davis Bertans. I had to Google it because he's not even on the stat sheet. And I know. He didn't play, but like even the people that don't play, like Composo, Jaden Hardy, and Theo Pinson get a DMP coach decision. So I don't really know what's going on with Davis Bertans for him not even to be on the report. Ah, he has a knee injury. That's why. Okay, cool. I mean, not cool. That makes it seem like <laughs> that made it seem like we were rooting for an injury. Absolutely not. I have actually skipped over this Atlanta Hawks Knicks game, a game that I turned off to focus on other ones. Because at one point in this one, let me see what the biggest lead actually was for the Knicks tonight. The biggest lead was a 23-point lead in the first half, and they, they ended up losing by 13. They were up by 23, and then later in this game was down by 19. 
Uh, DeJounte Murray put together his best performance on the team. I'm um, doing a little bit of everything, getting them passing lanes and getting steals and then running the break, hitting three pointers. I think this is the most three pointers he's ever hit in this NBA career. Or, I'm sorry, attempted. Attempted. I don't know about the mix, but 12 attempted threes is the most he's ever seen. I think nine was the previous one. Uh, 36 points, five, five steals, nine assists. And. You, you know how Trey Young is once he gets to that Mecca. You know what I'm saying? Even though he didn't have no crazy game, it just feels like he always wins. And you know what? I put him in one of my entries today because if you look at his numbers in Madison Square Garden, he has hit the over every single time. And then today, just 17 points. So I didn't hit on that one. But I did get one 5 for 5 on prize picks. Shout out to me. And that was pretty solid. Um, I, I did not watch the turnaround of this game, so I don't really have any notes. And I asked Knicks fans, like, what the hell happened? And they were saying Tom Thibodeau put Evan Fournier back in the game, and then Julius Randle was selling. Knicks fans, you tell me if that's true. I don't, <laughs> I don't really know. And that is every single game that we were able to watch today. The Grizzlies Trailblazers one got no seconds because I was really invested in Lakers versus Pelicans. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, but the Grizzlies end up winning the game. I see Anthony Simons had 31 points. Desmond Bain had 29. So, you know, some of the young players that are really enjoyable to watch had good games. And I'll, prob I'll probably watch the possessions from Anthony Simons and the possessions from John Desmond Bain. Uh, but overall, great slate of games, man. Great slate of games tonight. If you enjoyed, leave it a like. And uh, I'll see you all tomorrow, maybe. Or the day after. I don't know.